Time now for the markets with Layton. And you say Ag Secretary Tom Vilsack says he will not designate cotton as an oil seed? That is correct. And as you might imagine, that decision not sitting well. Some, in fact, say he abandoned the cotton belt. Looking now at all of our market headlines, producers say they intend to plant more cotton than a year ago. There are fewer catfish ponds around in 2016, as volatility remains a hallmark of the cattle sector. More cottonseed is going into the soil this year than in 2015, according to the National Cotton Council's Planting Intention Survey. Nationwide, cotton acreage is estimated to top 9 million acres, an increase of over 6%. In the Mid-South states alone, the increase in planted cotton acreage is projected to be almost a 25% increase from 2015. And in the state of Mississippi, hold on for this figure, a 40% increase in cotton acres is the estimate from the Cotton Council survey. Extension Ag economist Brian Williams is a little dubious of that projected Mississippi increase, although he says he can understand producers' motivation to go with more cotton. Prices, for the most part, are steady, even though not great. Of course, Tuesday was an exception, as most contracts saw triple-digit losses in the face of rising ending stocks projections. But back to those planning intention numbers first. The National Cotton Council is forecasting an increase in U.S. plantings and also Mississippi acreage. Does that surprise you, Brian? Well, in a way it does, in a way it doesn't. I think most people were expecting a little bit higher acreage, but I wasn't expecting quite so big of an increase in Mississippi. Um, they in, they, they're expecting an increase of 40% uh, for Mississippi's cotton acreage and then 6% uh, nationally uh, from, from a year ago. So, uh, But Mississippi, those numbers were, were awful high to me. Does all this stem partly at least from the lower crop prices and the competing crops? I think it does. Um, cotton has been staying fairly steady. The cotton markets have. They really haven't gone up too much, but they haven't gone down too much. But at the same time, all of our other crops have really come down quite a bit from a year ago. So it makes cotton look a little bit more appealing. Well, given the fact, I know you mentioned a stable market, but yet not, uh, not real great or high prices are producers going to be able to uh, get financing or to break even if they do indeed increase, increase plantings? It's going to be tight for a lot of producers. Uh, with, with cotton staying steady, that helps, and, and costs have come down a little bit. But right now our, our uh, budgets are projecting a loss still for cotton. But it's really going to vary from producer to producer. Your lower cost producers might do better uh, than, than some. and, and also, it, it could depend on production. If they have a good year production-wise, they might be able to turn a profit as well. Let's kind of switch uh, to the global perspective a little bit. Is, is China in that situation, is that still like the 800-pound gorilla in the room? Always. China is China's always going to be a real big player. They have such uh, big stocks or such, such a large amount of stocks in China that any time they think about releasing some of those stocks that could drive the markets down. Um, but I don't think it's a real big worry because if they do release those stocks and, and drive the markets down, that's going to impact them too. And so they really don't want to hurt themselves either. All right. Also speaking globally, uh, not only the United States, but you know, crude oil prices everywhere, down, dropping concerns perhaps in some quarters about a, a global economic slowdown maybe or downturn. And that's never good for cotton. Either. It's not. And, and really, cotton is driven by uh, demand so much. Um, and and any time the, the economy is hurting, whether it's here in the U.S. or globally, that's going to have a, a negative impact on, on cotton demand. We break for our trivia quiz now. And here it is for this week. What state ranks first in sweet corn production? Is the answer Minnesota, Mississippi, Texas, or Georgia? Stay with us to find out. A major snapshot of the nation's farm-raised catfish industry indicates that sales are up, but contraction still underway. The government's February 5th report shows the value of sales nationwide is up 3%. Water surface acres are down 11% from one year ago, and inventories of large food-sized catfish are down over 30%. Now, in Mississippi, that inventory number is down 57% from January 2015. In Laurel, major layoffs are coming before July 4th at a chicken processing plant. Georgia-based Wayne Farm says it is closing its deboning lines at its Laurel facility. That move will put 
500 workers out of a job this summer. The company says the deboning lines are closing because one customer has contracted for the entire plant's production and only wants whole chickens. Well, it was a rocky start this past week for live cattle. February futures added triple digit losses to a limit down move that started the week on Monday. And in feeder cattle, the second week of the month started with limit losses as well on Monday. And Sue Martin says she's okay with such volatility in the beef sector. This market is a little bipolar or whatever you want to call it, schizophrenic. Um, and it does have volatility. I'm not I guess I don't have the same sentiments towards the volatility that some people do. Uh, I think that the volatility does allow us to get trades off at times. We just have to be willing to jump. And in the meantime, I think that uh, the cash market um, was kind of a little bit all over the map today, but there was some talk of 135 being paid. And so I think that that was good news. We're going to have a good number of placements as we go through this year and on into next year. So from August feeders on out, market may not be so special and we'll maybe want to use some rallies. You, it's, but then the good news is the enthusiasm should be more up front if we're going to have it. Back to the trivia quiz now to wrap things up for this week. We were looking at a particular type of vegetable production. A is the right answer. Minnesota ranks number one in sweet corn production.